Monday edition of PFTPM. Let's get right into it. What happens first, Miles? First category. Who gets traded first? Carson Wentz, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson. Who goes first? I feel like you're you're making me play a game of Mary, you know, murder or whatever the third <laughs> thing is there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah whatever the third thing is. Yeah, whatever the third thing is. Uh, it should be Carson Wentz, though, that gets traded first, right? Because Carson Wentz, I think, is the only one of these guys that's really immediately about to get traded. So I think when you look at it, you know, we obviously know the rumors that he was supposedly supposed to be traded last week after the Super Bowl. I remember that was the reporting, and then obviously that did not happen, and it's apparently because the Eagles haven't been offered enough uh, in terms of a trade offer quite yet. So I would say that uh, Wentz probably gets traded first, then Deshaun Watson, and I don't see Russell Wilson getting traded. I don't see why they would trade him because I don't think the, the relationship between the Seahawks and Russell Wilson is irreparable like I think it is with Deshaun Watson, Mike. Somebody in the industry who likes to stir a little crap from time to time texted me a screenshot of ESPN this morning, and it said at the bottom, Eagles expected to trade Carson Wentz in the coming days. Chris Mortensen and Adam Schefter report, and the question posed to me was, what's the record for most consecutive days that a trade is expected in the coming days? But it's it's been expected in the coming days for the past 10 to 15 days. I, look, I, I think I think the reality is, and I agree with you, I think Wentz is the first one to go. And March 19 is the practical deadline. Unless the Eagles want to pay Wentz a $10 million roster bonus and then say to the Colts or whoever the suitor is, we want more. We want $10 million in draft pick value for the money we've paid this guy because now you only have to pay him $30 million over the next two years, not $40 million. I, I, I doubt that the Eagles are going to do that. I don't think Jeffrey Lurie wants to cut a check to Carson Wentz for $10 million. I think it gets done by the 19th. And I think right now they're just waiting for someone to come out of the weeds. It's a deadline-driven business. There's no reason to come out of the weeds now. There's no sense that a deal is, is happening momentarily with the Colts. I feel like the Colts are the only real destination. Two second-round picks is what Ron Jaworski said the Colts have offered. The, I don't know why Wentz would want to go to the Bears. I don't know why the Bears would want Wentz. Peter King and I argued about that this morning. If I'm Wentz, I want nothing to do with Chicago because that fan base is just a half of a click below Philly from the standpoint of how upset they're going to be if Wentz stinks. At least in Indianapolis, he'd be patient. Or it wouldn't be obvious that he stinks because the offense is already pretty good. The defense is already pretty good. It's a better team. It's a better situation to walk into. I think he wants to go to Indy. I think the Colts want him, but the Colts know they can wait. But I think it comes to a head before either of the other two situations are ready for a deal to be reached between new team and current team. Yeah, and I think that the fact that Wentz should want to go to Indianapolis is really the only destination, at least off the top of my head, that would seem to make sense for him. I mean, he's very familiar with Frank Reich is there. Press Taylor is now there. Uh, so that from that standpoint, it's like, all right, these are guys that I know and guys that I trust and guys who I think can really get the best out of me. And that's got to be really important to him. I think, you know, anybody's got pride. As a QB, you've got to have some pride in order to get out there and compete and try to compete at a high level. And if Carson Wentz has that, then he's going to want to go to a situation where he's going to be set up the best in order to succeed. And frankly, based on the way he played in 2020, where he took 50 sacks and led the league, even though he didn't play a 50, a 16 game season. I don't know why anybody else would really want him. I don't know why anybody else would say, yeah, I'll give you more than two first round picks for this guy. He's not shown that he can play at a level recently enough. That's going to tell you, look, yeah, I have a lot of confidence that he can get back to his 2017 level. I, I just, I don't know why you would do that. Acquiring him on the hope that 2020 was an aberration is not the best way to go about filling your quarterback position. Next topic, Jets trade Sam Darnold or the NFL draft? What happens first? 
That's an interesting one because I, it just makes me think about the Arizona Cardinals a couple years ago and what they ended up doing with Josh Rosen, which was keep him until they picked Kyler Murray at one. And then they still got a second round pick for him. And I mean, now that we've seen Josh Rosen's career unfold over the last couple of years, it kind of seems like the Arizona Cardinals got back the best value they could ever possibly get back for Josh Rosen. I think that Sam Darnold could maybe command a first round pick. I don't know that I would trade a first round pick for him, but if I'm, you know, 20 or lower and I might need a QB, then that's something that I would consider doing. But I don't know that that means that Darnold's gonna get drafted, or excuse me, get traded before the draft because I don't know when his value is exactly going to be highest. I mean, I guess it is right now before that, uh, before the draft happens, if the Jets do take a QB, but if they don't, then he's still going to have some value, Mike. But, you know, you've identified a, a third category, the sweet spot between the start of the draft and the start of round two on the second day of the draft. That's that opportunity to work out a deal for Darnold if the Jets take a quarterback with the second overall pick. And if there's a team out there that was evaluating the possibility of taking a quarterback, didn't, but still has a need at the position and wants to bring in Sam Darnold. That, that one intrigues me. The other thing, too, is you just let the dust settle on the draft. And then after the draft, if a team isn't happy with its quarterback position, or maybe a team that was kind of bluffing its way through the draft. You know, I look at the 49ers. I think they'd, they'd surely like to trade Jimmy Garoppolo if they're going to move on, not cut him. But if you can't find a trade partner for Jimmy Garoppolo, cutting him becomes a viable option. You're looking at $25 million or thereabouts that you're going to pay a guy that can't stay healthy. Maybe after the draft, if you don't draft a quarterback, you trade for Sam Darnold. And you say, see you later to Jimmy Garoppolo in one fell swoop. So there's a lot of different ways that that one could go. And that one intrigues me because I'm not going to commit to one or the other. And maybe you're right. Maybe it happens during. All right, last one real quick. What happens first? J.J. Watts signs with the team or free agency officially begins? I wish that this were the, the cap officially gets set because I think that is when you're, we're going to see more movement on J.J. Watt. When we know what the cap is going to be, if it actually is going to be at $180 million, if it's going to be a little bit higher than that or maybe a little bit below that, then I think we'll start to see more movement on J.J. Watt because at that point, teams are going to know what they can actually offer him, Mike. And I think before they know what they can offer him, it's going to be really hard to sign a veteran guy like that. Yeah, I agree with you. Unless he decides to go to one of the teams that has the cap space that they can go ahead and jump. I think he's more motivated by playing where he wants to play than grabbing as much money as he can at this point. But we'll see how that plays out. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.